the independence of x and y. So we have just one goal for this session. This is a very important topic. It's a very powerful idea we're looking at. The idea that motion in one direction is independent of motion in a perpendicular direction. That's what we call the independence of x and y. x and y being two different directions. There are limitations to this approach. So it's a very useful approach, but we have to apply it only when it's appropriate. So a situation in which, it, in which it would not apply is when air resistance is an important factor. In our cases, we'll generally neglect air resistance, and we can get away with using this concept of the independence of x and y. So we're going to do this. We're going to take one ball and we'll just drop it from rest and let it fall through a height h. A second ball will release from the same height, but we'll give it an initial horizontal velocity. No initial vertical velocity, only horizontal velocity. Which ball lands on the ground first? Neglect air resistance. Okay, so let's see this in action. So there's the first ball. We're just going to drop it from rest and let it fall straight down. And the other one, we're going to give that horizontal kick at the beginning and it will follow a different trajectory. So let's look at what we know. And do you vote for first ball, the second ball, or both hit the ground at the same time? Okay, so let's just really focus on that first ball that we dropped. We've done this before. So if you look at the motion diagram, you can see the dots get further and further apart as time goes by, and that's consistent with the speed gradually getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and that is consistent with a downward acceleration. Okay, so we've seen this before. We understand that motion diagram. It is consistent with motion with constant acceleration experienced by any object you just drop from rest, and it accelerates because of gravity. Okay, so let's look at the other one. So here's the motion diagram for that one. And again, it follows a parabolic trajectory. So this is a little bit different. We haven't seen this one before. So we'll break that one down a bit. Okay, so let's look at it again. So we'll break it into a horizontal piece and a vertical piece. And let's look at them and look at the result, really. Okay, so here we have the whole parabolic motion. But at the top, you see the constant velocity motion associated with the horizontal part because there's no acceleration horizontally. And vertically, we again see the dots in the motion diagram getting further and further apart. Okay, so, and by the way, where the ball is at any instant in time is a combination of where it is horizontally and where it is vertically. Okay, so now we'll put everything together and we'll look at both balls. And what you can see here is that the horizontal part of the motion of the ball that goes in a parabola is completely irrelevant, right? What matters is that vertically everything's the same. Vertically they both start with no vertical velocity, they have the same vertical acceleration, they're traveling the same distance horizontally, everything's the same horizontally. And so it's really a race between two things in which everything is the same, sorry, everything is the same vertically. A race between two things in which everything is the same vertically and what happens vertically determines the time to hit the ground. So the two balls have to hit at exactly the same time here. The fact that one has an extra horizontal piece to, to its motion doesn't matter one bit. Okay, so that situation illustrates this quite powerful idea that the vertical motion happens completely independently of the horizontal motion. And more generally, we can say that motion in one direction is independent of motion in a perpendicular direction. They don't necessarily have to be horizontal and vertical, in other words. And this will be very important for us as we go through projectile motion. So this kind of foreshadows what's coming up in the next video we do. 
and projectile motion is two-dimensional motion under the influence of gravity alone. So once you let the object go, it only uh, is its motion is changing only because of the effect of uh, gravity. And so here we have kind of a similar situation. So in this case, what we did is we tossed two balls up into the air. One of them went straight up and is coming straight down. And the other one has, in addition to a vertical part of the motion, has a horizontal component to the motion as well. Okay, so once again, you can see that the horizontal part of the motion, that's consistent with motion with constant velocity. The dots are equally spaced. Vertically, what happens is on the way up, the dots get closer together. On the way down, the dots get farther apart. Note that on the way down, the ball passed through exactly the same positions it went through on the way up. Okay, so the up and down part of the motions are mirror images of one another, really. And the time is determined by how far up it goes. And both those objects, the one that went straight up and down and the one that went in this parabolic trajectory, uh, reach the same total height, and so they take, in fact, the same time. And the fact that one has an extra horizontal part of its motion doesn't matter one little bit. Okay, so that is our introduction to the independence of x and y. And, uh, oh, again, just remember that we're following the motion from the time just after the object is released until just before it hits the ground, so the only thing acting is gravity. And we neglect air resistance. Okay, now it really is the end.